The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Oh, hell no! Whatever! The following program contains opinions expressed by The Dead Zone. If you find this broadcast offensive, <laughs> lighten up, candy ass. What? Oh my gosh. It's a radio show. Hell yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Power up request received. Initiating systems. Powering up transmitters. Welcome to the dead zone. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Heal face. WDZI Digital Broadcast. It's Michelle again, doing paranormal news and events on The Dead Zone. This week's episode is brought to you again by me, Michelle Poy, Associate Broker at Seasons of Indiana Real Estate. Contact me for all your real estate needs through my Dead Zone email, michelle.deadzone at gmail.com. That's Michelle with two L's, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E dot dead zone at gmail.com. This episode is also brought to you by K.D. Wakefield, the author of a new suspense thriller called Murderous Masquerade. This is available in paperback or Kindle, so order your copy today on Amazon. Paranormal News. Hello everyone, this is Michelle with Paranormal News. I found on MysteriousUniverse.org a story titled Supernatural Strangeness at New Jersey's Most Cursed and Haunted Road, written by Brett Swanser. Meandering through dark woods and rural backwaters of West Milford, Passaic County, New Jersey, is the notorious Clinton Road. Named after the original settlement called Clinton, it stretches through roughly 10 miles of mostly isolated, privately owned woodland with very few houses and it is known for its dark stretches through the spooky forest. Unpaved for much of its run, it is rare to pass any other cars out here and surrounded by tangled feral woods, it is a spooky place that seems perfect for the setting of some horror movie and it is perhaps this ominous ambiance that has contributed to its notoriety as this one lonely stretch of road is absolutely permeated with legends plenty of spooky lore and a manner and all manner of strangeness from ghosts to ufos to bizarre creatures from some nightmare clinton road has it all one of the more prominent tales from the area is that of a place called cross castle it was built in 1905 by a man named richard cross who settled the area and constructed the stone dwelling for him and his family This was at a time when the woods and the area were already known for being an ominous, threatening place with stories of ghosts and witches wandering the gloom already doing the rounds. According to Weird New Jersey, J. Percy Creighton once said of the place at the time, It was never advisable to pass through the five-mile woods after dark, for tradition tells us they were infested with bands of robbers and counterfeiters to say nothing of the witches that held their nightly dances and carousels at Green Island and the ghosts that then made their appearance in such frightful forms that it was more terrifying to the peaceful inhabitants than wild animals or even the Indians that often passed. This did not detour Cross at all, and he had his castle built, but it would in later be abandoned after Cross's death in 1917 and fall into disrepair before burning down in a fire to leave only the stone skeleton after that being demolished once and for all in 1988. There are only very faint vestiges remaining of the place today, but the land it sat on has supposedly long been intensely haunted. 
Before the place was torn down, it was a popular spot for curiosity seekers, and they would often come back with all manner of tales of ghostly phenomena, much of it seeming malevolent. People reported being pushed, shoved, and hit by unseen hands with enough force to leave bruises, and also common are sudden, very potent waking nightmares and unexplained seizures or confusion. Even today, with only the foundations of the castle remaining, poking out of the brush like the remnants of some lost civilization, such reports come in from this spot, and it has also gathered a reputation as being a meeting place for shadowy cults and Satanists who leave behind evidence of their arcane rituals and indecipherable graffiti. One very eerie story was given by a witness to Weird New Jersey who says... I had a friend who lived near Clinton Road. He used to take me on May Day and Halloween's Eve to spy on Wiccans practicing in the areas near his house. The proof I have is more than a kid's flashback of witches. It pertains to what was transcribed on the walls of Cross Castle and how a historical fact about the writing will reveal that a Satanist movement was using the area for their practices. It was a nice afternoon in 1977. We decided to get our packs, a tent, and a rifle to spend the night up in the woods. I took a journal along with me. When we came upon the castle, we were amazed, as always, at how it stood out in the woods. We entered it and were shocked to learn that someone had put up two huge boards with words spelled out in red paint. The nature of the writing intrigued me, so I copied down what the walls proclaimed, and my friend snapped a picture. The journal stayed in a box until six months ago, when after my wife's death, I I was going through everything and read it. What was once scribbled down in my youth was now revealed as one of the writings of Anton LaVey of the Church of Satan. I went to a local bookstore to match my journal with the Lex Satanicus. I concluded that the tales about Clinton Road were seriously understated. The Satanists who practiced there were not a joke, but a local grotto of people using dark forces to bring forth their evil reign. Now when I go to Clinton Road, I look at everything in a different light. Perhaps just as famous in the area is the place called Dead Man's Curve, in particular bridge that lies along its length. Here it is said that there lurks the ghost of a young boy who will appear if you stop to throw coins into the water below. According to the tale, the boy will materialize to throw the coins right back at you, sometimes with enough force to crack windshields or dent cars, or alternatively leave them lying in the middle of the road. The boy will often appear as a reflection in the water, or as a full apparition walking along the road, and the legend draws in scores of people who come to throw pennies into the water in attempt to summon the ghost boy. Scarier stories involving the ghost boy say that he will try and push you into the water, although it is thought that this is a gesture to help you from being hit by the car that killed him. The ghost boy certainly has plenty of company on Clinton Road because there are numerous other specters said to call this place home. There are ghostly vehicles that patrol the road, such as the Phantom Camaro and a black ghost truck that will speed up to cars, flash its lights, and then just vanish. Two ghostly park rangers are said to be seen along the road, especially near Terrence Pond, and there are many shadow figures seen here. One witness has said of the phantom rangers, Much further up the road on the right there are trails that go up the mountain to a lake called Terrace Pond. The pond was crystal clear and great for swimming. We used to camp up there, and we had a really weird occurrence that happened to us. We were camping one night around 1 a.m., and two park rangers noticed our fire and walked over to us. They were concerned about the fire, drinking, etc. We asked if our vehicles would be okay where they were and asked if they would be ticketed. They said they were fine and no ticketing would be carried out. In the morning, we ventured down the mountainside and approached our cars, and they had two summons per car. West Milford Police and Newark Watershed Authorities approached us and we asked them about the park rangers and they looked bewildered. We then told them that we were speaking with two younger men and they said that we were okay to stay in camp, our vehicles were okay and we would not be fined. 
one of the Newark Watershed Authorities replied, What did these park rangers look like and what were they wearing? We described their appearance and the authority told us that there were no park rangers patrolling the property anymore and the two men we saw that night were killed on patrol in 1939. There are myriad of other strange stories tied to the road, secret KKK meetings, mafiosos dumping dead bodies, a cursed druid temple, and many others. Adding to all of this are the various other bizarreness cited along the road. UFO, mysterious orbs, phantom hounds, Bigfoot, roving bands of albinos, devil monkeys, winged humanoids, and other less definable monsters. There are also numerous reports of lost time, mysterious illnesses, and a general sense of unease, with some people reporting that the atmosphere can be absolutely oppressive and stifling, with some people explaining it as feeling as if being suffocated by pure evil. Why is it that this one little stretch of road should draw to it so much bizarreness? Is there something about the history of the place, the land it lies on, or is it just the spooky legends we innately build up around inherently spooky places? No matter the answer, Clinton Road has gained a reputation as one of the most haunted and strangest places in the state, bringing in numerous paranormal investigators and curiosity seekers. It will likely remain a strange future of the landscape for some time to come. Okay, so now if anyone that is listening has been to this location, I would love for you to send me an email and I would like to interview you. Are you in a band or know of a band that is currently unsigned and looking for airplay for free? We want to hear from you. One of the main goals of the show is to help promote up-and-coming bands and artists as well as our paranormal community. Getting your name out there can be tough, especially these days. Shoot us an email, deadzonebooking at gmail.com. If your music fits our genre, hard rock, 80s, 90s metal, and new metal, we want to help. <laughs> So I found on winemag.com, which is a website for wine enthusiasts, an article about the five most haunted bars in the world. Number one is Shaker's Cigar Bar in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It says that it was built on a cemetery in 1894 and has had its fair share of paranormal experiences. And according to the bar's owner... The building was owned by Al Capone's crime syndicate in 1924. On the second and third floors, it served as a speakeasy and brothel. There was a woman named Molly Brennan who left home to work in the brothel and disappeared three years later. Some people believe that she never really left. The owner says that several psychics independently confirmed the spirit's name. Shortly after Shakers launched in 1986, the owner came to know Elizabeth, who reportedly haunts the bathroom. Apparently, she was climbing for apples in 1835 in a stand of apple trees in the cemetery, which Shakers is built upon. She fell and broke her neck. They claim that they were, they met her in 1987 when two servers were able to coax her out of the bathroom. They made a circle with their arms. The owner put his hand in the middle of it and felt a blast of freezer. The servers explained that it was Elizabeth. Along with reported apparitions in mirrors, unexplained footsteps, and ghostly figures, Shakers also used to be the go-to spot of infamous serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer. They say that he would order a gin and tonic, would not talk, no conversation, he would just drink his drink and stare or sneer at people. Next we have the Mermaid Inn in Rye, England. The Mermaid Inn proudly states that it's hosted travelers for 600 years. Throughout the history, they have served, the inn has served everything from a hideout 
for Catholic priests during the Reformation period in the, in the 1530s to a stage where William Shakespeare's theater troupe Lord Chamberlain's Men performed. But perhaps most notably, the inn was once the headquarters for the notorious Hawkehurst Gang. The gang, which according to NPR had about 600 members, was known for smuggling tea. If anyone was found to say things they shouldn't about the smugglers, they were sometimes nailed alive to their front doors. The inn's long history extends to the paranormal. Several guests said that they saw a thin apparition of a woman wearing white or gray sitting by the fireplace in room one. Each of the guests reported that that anything they left on the chair became soaking wet when she disappeared, even though there were no nearby windows or pipes. Arguably, one of the strangest stories in 1993, English actress Kiki Kendrick and her husband stayed at the inn's Elizabethan, Elizabethan chamber. They awoke at 4 a.m. to the sound of heavy breathing and knives clashing together. Reportedly, they saw two ghostly figures fighting. When the couple told the inn's bartender, he showed them a newspaper article from six months earlier that described the same exact spectacle. Next, we have John Cavanaugh or the Gravediggers in Dublin, Ireland. In 1832, the first person was laid to rest in Glasnevin Cemetery, Ireland's first non-denominational graveyard. A year later, John Cavanaugh was gifted a pub by his father-in-law, which shared a wall with the historic graveyard. According to the BBC, the pub soon became a popular spot for mourners on their way to or from funerals. But the bar started being called the Gravediggers a few decades back. My father, Eugene, took over the bar from my, gan my grandfather, John, in 1973, says Ciaran Kavanaugh, one of the pub's owners. A young crowd started to come in, and they noticed a few gravediggers drinking here, so they started calling it the Gravediggers, so it became a popular name. If workers couldn't wait till the end of their shift for a pint, they would simply knock on the graveyard's gate nearest to the pub. My dad, grandfather, or barman would bring their drink and pass it through the railings to the grave diggers. Like the other bars on this list, the pub also has reportedly has some ghostly run-ins. Some claim to have seen a man dressed in tweed finishing a pint of Guinness at the bar before fading away. My dad, later in life, had paranormal investigators come to the pub after hours to do what they do. Sometimes they make contact, including one medium who drew a picture that my dad said looked like my late grandfather. I haven't seen or heard anything, but when it's closed, there is a feeling or sense of family history. Featured in Lonely Planet's guidebook, Secret Europe, 50 Truly Unforgettable Experiences to Inspire Your Next Trip in 2014, Grave Diggers is a perfect place to drop in for a pint and food. Bushwalker Brew Pub in Regina, Canada. After it received a liquor license in 1990, it opens its doors the next year. It's become a well-known spot to have a pint, enjoy daily specials, and possibly spot a ghost. Back in June 1912, Regina was hit by one of the country's worst ever recorded tornadoes. It killed 28 people and leveled buildings, which included one on a site where the pub now stands. According to CBC Canada, Grant Few, the pub's bar and marketing manager, says several psychic mediums have visited the pub and felt the presence of many ghosts, but there's one that the pub claims to know by name, James Strathdee. In 1914, he was hired to manage a warehouse built on the land where many people died in the tornado. In the 1930s, Strathdee was in a car accident. While he survived, he sustained head injuries, and according to the Brew Pub's website, he was never quite the same. His business partner soon tried to pressure him out of his position, and his wife wanted to move back to Scotland. He was said to have fallen into a deep depression and was found dead several months later. The official cause of death was suicide. The warehouse Strathdee once managed later became Bushwhacker, 
but many think he remained in the pub. One of the bar's managers believes she saw someone walk into Bushwhacker's room for private functions. She followed him to say that they couldn't go in there, but when she opened the door, no one was inside, and the only exit was sealed shut. Michael Gates, the brew pub's head brewer, experienced possibly the most dramatic ghostly encounter. One day while on a break, he says he was pushed from behind so forcefully that he nearly fell. Later, he says he found a red mark on his back where he felt that he had been pushed. The Hero of Waterloo in Sydney, Australia. In 1815, the Duke of Wellington led his troops to victory over Napoleon in Waterloo, Belgium, to end the wars that raged for 23 years. The Duke had since been memorialized, memorialized sorry, by the Hero of Waterloo, a hotel, bar, and restaurant located in Sydney that served customers since 1843. But the bar is believed to have a dark history. In 1793, Thomas Kirkman, an Irishman who was tried and sent to Australia for likely being an Irish rebel, according to Waterloo's website. He took over the Waterloo in 1845. The pub was a popular spot for whaling ships and merchants, but some men that went into this pub were never seen again. It's believed that under Kirkman, many times sailors were drugged and awoke in chains in the bar's basement. They were then smuggled out through a tunnel from the bar to the harbor, where they most likely were sold into slavery. Today, you can tour the bar cellar and see the chains and passageway. Kirkman also had a wife, Anne, who supposedly fell down the stairs in 1849. Many believe he pushed Anne, who broke her neck and died. She used to love to play the piano. It said in the middle of the night, classical music will sometimes play from the bar's piano. When people investigate, no one is there, but the piano's lid has been left open. According to the site, they have reportedly also been instances where chairs have been found facing the fireplace, even though nobody has been inside since the previous evening. So if you've been to any of these bars, please email me. Tell me about your experience at michelle.deadzone at gmail.com. This is Keith Age, and you're listening to The Dead Zone. My name is David Walton. I am a vocal performer for What Are You Afraid Of? Horror and Paranormal Show. And I have carried the burden of a terrible secret. I am actually what is offensively called a ghost. For years now, I have concealed my ectoplasmic existence from my friends and family in fear of a common prejudice against ghosts or what we like to call the disembodied. I have existed frightened of being discovered, unable to do physical acts that the embodied take for granted, such as walking a squirrel, or drinking a glass of vitamin E milk fresh squeezed from a whale. I grew depressed and even considered acts of self-harm or reincarnation, which is suicide for the disembodied. Such movies as Ghostbusters and its sequels drove my feelings of disenfranchisement and I began looking for help only to encounter painful exorcisms in the houses I haunted. Then I met two good people, it says here, Fox and Phil, at What Are You Afraid Of? Horror and Paranormal and they helped me take control of my own life. Now, it is my choice whether I wish to make phantom bangs in the night, appear at the foot of your bed in darkness, or make your walls bleed. If you are a disembodied person like I am, and you're living a lie, what are you afraid of can help you too. They are on at 9pm on Friday nights at Para X Radio, leaving plenty of time for midnight haunting activities and can be found on all major podcast services. 
Listen to their paranormal stories, interviews, humorous sketches and horror fiction to know that you are not alone. And if you are a member of the Embodied, don't forget, you are only a single heart attack or tumour away from becoming one of us. This is David Walton. See you on the other side. Or as I call it, this side. And that is the end of a perfect day. I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. story again still on coast to coast am story is called ghost boy spotted in jordan 
There is a video with this that you can also check out after I read the story here to you, then I'll let you know what I think of the video. An eerie video filmed by an urban explorer in Jordan appears to show a young boy lurking in an abandoned building, and some viewers suspect that the out-of-place figure is a ghost. The spooky footage was reportedly captured last month by Jordanian YouTube personality Hassan Barbar, who has created an array of videos wherein he instills shuttered sites where he visits shuttered sites in the hopes of encountering ghosts or documenting paranormal activity. In this particular instance, which saw the man investigating a building that appears to be unfinished, it would seem that this search, his search for spirits was successful. In the video, which was already rather spooky due to the darkness and its derelict nature of the site, Barbar roams around the building with a flashlight. When he illuminates down a series of doorways, he is stunned to see a small boy dressed in all black standing at the end of the makeshift hallway. After a brief stare down, the unsettling youngster eventually turns and walks out of sight. A shaken barbar then dashed towards the spot where he saw the stranger and finds that it is an empty room. As one might imagine, many viewers suspect that the ghost hunter stumbled upon the spirit of a child in the empty building. Unfortunately, due to the language barrier, it's difficult to get Barbar's precise thoughts on the experience. Though the Arabic caption to his video reads, The child of the jinn threatened me that he would complain about my appearance, which would appear to indicate that the ghost hunter believes that he encountered a supernatural being. Of course, not everyone is convinced, as many skeptical observers argue that the scene was orchestrated in order to generate a buzz for Barbar's YouTube channel. With that in mind, what's your take on the video? So if you go to the page, check it out. Tell me what you think. Email me at michelle.deadzone at gmail.com. And I'll tell you my thoughts on it. It looks like a person standing down at the end of a hallway in a doorway. And just stands there for a minute and then turns and walks away. It does not look spiritual at all. Um, it just looks like someone standing there whether it's a young boy or a teenager or a short man it's hard to tell because they're not close enough but my gut says that it's not real it was staged anyway check it out let me know michelle.deadzone at gmail.com hello this is christopher st booth and you're listening to the dead zone I was checking out phantomsandmonsters.com and found this story here. Can a rake humanoid attach its energy to someone? A Canadian woman only witnessed a pale humanoid when in the presence of her Swedish ex-boyfriend. Since then, the same entity has again manifested around the ex-boyfriend and his new girlfriend. I recently came across the following account. In 2012, my then-boyfriend lived in Sweden. I lived in Canada. He came to visit me, and during one of the evenings, I woke up to something strange perched at the foot of the bed. It was a pale, thin, humanoid figure. It was completely hairless, and the legs seemed to be bowed in some way. It seemed to walk on all fours despite looking human. I couldn't see much of its face since it was looking away from me. It looked a lot like the creature from the fictional story, The Rake. When I gasped, it hopped off the bed and into the darkness. My partner heard me and woke to ask me what was wrong. I didn't tell him as to not alarm him while trying to rest. In 2014, he was visiting me once more, and we were once again in bed sleeping. I woke up to hear my boyfriend screaming like I've never heard before. I immediately turned on the light and shook him to try to snap him out of it, but he just screamed, and then he cried. About 30 or so minutes, he finally was calm enough to explain what had happened. Apparently, he woke up 
to a pale humanoid figure with a gaping mouth and black sunken eyes basically on top of him. As he screamed, the figure slowly backed itself into the closet hole staring at him, crawling on all fours. I felt sick. I had never told him about what I saw a few years prior. There's no way he could have known and described what I saw perfectly like that. Now it's shown up again. My ex messaged me today. We're still friends. And he told me his now girlfriend has seen the pale man. They were asleep, and apparently she woke up to see this thing stalking around the room, and it noticed her frozen in fear, so it crawled up next to her. My ex woke up and tried to console her. She described what she saw. It apparently was a perfect, exact match to the thing we both saw. I only ever told him what I saw after his experience, and she has never heard of either of our experiences. Is this just a mass coincidence of hallucinating while waking up? Is it a demon or some sort of haunting? I'm really freaked out. Signed, S.H. So, anybody out there ever had any experiences with a creature like this? What they call the rake? Um, My son and a friend of his thought that they saw it uh, out in the woods where we live one day a few years back. And uh, it it freaked them both out for quite a while. It's still something that he talks about. Um, I've never personally experienced anything like that. But if you have, send me your story at michelle.deadzone. Sorry, michelle.deadzone at gmail.com. Millions of people are affected by the Para-X bug. I realize that it is something that will stay with me for the rest of my life and long into the afterlife as well. If you have the Para-X bug, there is hope. With a nightly visit to the Para-X website and intensive past life regression therapy, I can control it. Even with the Para-X bug, I can still lead an active life of radio show hosting, paranormal investigating, evidence checking, attending conferences, book writing, keeping up with the latest technology, and still keep my 40 hour a week day job. If you think that you have the Para X bug or know someone who might, visit para x.com. And remember, you are not alone. I am not alone. I. 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 I am not alone. The Para X bug may cause the urge to chase shadow people, visit exotic haunted locations, adopt a pug wedgie, or spend all of your time trying to figure out the laws and principles of paranormal investigation. Listening to Para-X may increase these effects. Sudden visions of full-body apparitions or feeling the covers being pulled off you in the middle of the night by unseen hands may also be signs of exposure to the Para-X bug. The use of Para-X may be habit-forming and an overwhelming desire to provoke spirits may be a serious side effect. If these symptoms last more than four hours, you should quickly consult a trusted witch and have her cast a what the hell are you thinking spell on you. If symptoms persist, please contact the Para-X Radio Network Homeland Security Team for further instructions. The Para-X bug may cause urges for late night speaking with spirits and ghosts. Listening to Para-X may increase these effects. Overwhelming desire to try provoking a spirit may be a serious side effect. Those with Para-X bug effects lasting more than four hours should consult Para-X or see a professional. Sudden outbursts at the mention of orbs may be a sign of exposure to the Para-X bug. Use of Para-X may be habit-forming. Use caution when engaging in Para-X chat. Your source for everything paranormal. Para-X. Now the next story that I found was on Coast to Coast AM. Thai Paranormal Show Cancelled Following Controversial Ghost Hunt. And again, I'm going to say this, I say this all the time. There are uh, words, cities, names in a lot of these stories that I just cannot pronounce very well. So I apologize in advance for any mispronunciations. A popular paranormal television program in Thailand has been canceled following a controversial ghost hunt in which one of the investigators dishonored a national heroine. 
The strange incident reportedly occurred when the team from Chong Song Fi, which translates to the real ghosts, were visiting a temple that serves as a shrine and final resting place for Lady Mo. A weird figure who legend has it saved the city's residents from a forced evacuation by invading forces in the 19th century. During the televised hunt, a purported psychic medium claimed to be in communication with Lady Mo's husband and asserted that the spirit told her that his adopted daughter named Boon Lua had actually been his mistress. Oddly enough, the episode originally aired back in February, and the alleged revelation from the other side apparently did not cause much of a stir. However, for reasons unexplained, word of the ghost hunt began spreading on social media in Thailand over the last few weeks. The simmering discontent over the episode reaching a full boil this week when several officials in Thailand decried the actions of Chong Song Fee's ghost hunters. The show is disrespecting Lady Mo and destroying her and Lady Boon La. Boon Lua's virtue, declared the head of a group dedicated to preserving the heroine's memory. Meanwhile, the individual who oversees the temple dedicated to the heroine demanded that the ghost hunters apologize for their actions. The outrage was also echoed by a local government official who also lambasted the program. They should research the historical facts before going on air like this. Wichian Shantaran Tai said they cannot claim something by contacting ghosts. It's not science. He went on to suggest that the city in which the temple is located may even pursue some kind of legal action against the ghost hunters as well as the television network behind Chong Song Fi. It would seem that the strong messages of condemnation were received loud and clear as the broadcaster promptly announced that they have decided to cancel the program. So hear that, Ghost Hunters? Be careful who is actually coming through and giving you messages. And be careful who you tell those messages to. I guess that's what I'm getting out of this. Uh, we can't speak our mind at all. Anyway, thanks for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope everyone is doing well, staying safe, and keeping their head up through everything. Thanks again. Have a great week. Bye. I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen.
Okay, and now back to business. I found an article here about using hypnosis as a tool to communicate with spirit guides and understanding spiritual realms. Okay, so the person that they were speaking with uh, goes by the name of James Schwartz. And he goes on to say that in hypnotic sessions with his clients who were communicating directly with their guides, he's gleaned much information about such things as the afterlife, karma, parallel planes, and healing. When we die, the spirit continues on and experiences other realms and dimensions, he detailed. Swartz's client, Danielle, working with a master guide, described her journey to a higher vibrational plane that she claimed she could simultaneously inhabit at night while her physical body remained here. This led Swartz to explore the idea that our spirits can experience parallel lives and multiple planes of awareness as we go about our daily existence. He compared our higher selves or spirit energy to a kind of power station that connects perhaps up to a hundred different simultaneous lifetimes and experiences. The guides have suggested that spirits are constantly reincarnating, he added. Swartz reached out to listeners inquiring if any were acquainted with the late Mount Shasta-based spiritual teacher Pearl Doris, who lived from 1906 to 1990, whom he believes has been coming through as his own guide. So I find this, uh, this topic very interesting, and I found some more articles that people have written about this. So we will go on to the next article. Here in just a second. All right, so I found another article on selfgrowth.com. It's called, the article is called Meet Your Spirit Guides. It's written by Michelle Baudry. So this is a pretty long article. I'm not going to read every little bit of it. So if you're interested, again, it's selfgrowth.com by Michelle Baldry called Meet Your Spirit Guides. She goes on to talk about um, that your guides love you. Your guides nudge you from time to time, registering as intuition or deja vu. They are that gut feeling that lets you know to embrace the situation or run away. They are the so-called imaginary friends you had as a child who came to play with you when you needed to not feel so lonely. Now that you are an adult, the clarity of their communication can become cloudy when you are spinning with emotional duress. Sometimes when you need them the most, you may feel the least receptive to their help. Please understand that this phenomenon generates from the human side only. Your guides always desire to help you. When you are ready to open a crystal clear channel of communication, they are right there with bells on. They love you. That is their job. From angels to zoo animals. So you may be pleased to know that angels prevail as spirit guides and your odds of having several angels looking out for you is high indeed. Keep an open mind when meeting your spirit guides for the first time. In years of helping clients meet their guides through hypnosis, I have known spirit guides to appear as angels, pulsing lights, Councils of 12 in white robes, two and four footed animals, alien life forms, and every description of human being imaginable, and so forth. Your guides may be a he, she, it, or they. Having a small group of several guides is common, yet you might have only one. No matter what visual form your guides take, they can and will readily communicate directly with you. So your options, you can visit a psychic reader and have them describe your guides to you. They'll be happy to deliver messages back and forth since the reader, not you, experiences them directly. With hypnosis, you have direct communication. Or you can use methods that include years of meditation, near-death experiences, and highly illegal non-prescription drugs. Do you have years at your disposal to learn meditation, or do you want answers now? Do you really want to tempt death? Do you trust hallucinogenic street drugs? I assure you there is a better, safer option, and that is hypnosis. So she goes on and on here and talks more and more about hypnosis. Like I said, I'm not going to read every little bit here to you. 
I'm going to go on down here. Um, what hypnosis is, please understand that the feeling of being an individual is a necessary part of experiencing a human lifetime. And for that experience, we need a conscious mind as well as the spiritually connected subconscious mind. Your conscious mind filters out the interconnectedness of all energy in the universe expressly so you can have your human experience of being an individual. Hypnosis simply sets aside the conscious part of the mind and it accesses the far larger, more powerful subconscious. In other words, set aside the conscious mind with hypnosis and its filter disengages. This opens up your senses to the spiritual world and gives you direct access to your guides. So easy, you do it with your eyes closed. Hypnosis is easier to do than you think, and your guys are happy to talk to you. So what are you waiting for? Meet them today. Oh, and one last note, refrain from asking your guides about money. For some reason, the very idea of money only makes them laugh. Ask them why yourself if you like. Ask them anything you like, anything at all. See, they love you. That is their job. Good evening. I am Sammy Terry. And you're listening to the Dead Zone. <laughs> Your source for everything paranormal. Para X. Are you in a band or know of a band that is currently unsigned and looking for airplay for free? We want to hear from you. One of the main goals of the show is to help promote up and coming bands and artists as well as our paranormal community. Getting your name out there can be tough, especially these days. Shoot us an email, deadzonebooking at gmail.com. If your music fits our genre, hard rock, 80s, 90s metal, and new metal, we want to help. <laughs> Hey 
Hey, this is Lee. If you missed tonight's show or any other show, you can always check them out in the archives on the ParaX Radio Network, or you can go to our website and click on any of your favorite apps. If you've enjoyed this episode, share it with your friends. This is the Dead Zone Paranormal Radio Show. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.